Mic check, mic check. Sort of five o'clock. It's... Sorry, we're late, guys. We're late. We're having technical difficulties, but we're here and you're watching Chelsea and Tony live. And this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning designer templates all in one platform and award-winning 24-7 customer support. I hear it's excellent, but I haven't needed it yet because it's that simple. If you can drag and drop, you can make your own website on Squarespace. You can try a free trial today. If you decide to get your own Squarespace, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code portfolio. If you already have a Squarespace, you can use the link sdp.io slash link and submit it to us for us to critique. Yeah, send your sites in. Thanks for sponsoring us, Squarespace. You can send the free trial too if you just want to try it. It's hey, a good exercise. if you want to talk to us, just write a comment during the live show. And our producer, Siobhan, out in Philly, can read it to us. Hey, Siobhan, how you doing? I'm good. It's weird when you ask me questions at the beginning because I don't expect it. <laughs> Stay on your toes. Let's bring one on Justin. Justin, what's up? Hey, how's it going? If you use hashtag TC Live on Twitter, Justin can put it on the screen. Uh, Justin can't seem to make his camera work. Yeah, it's, it's there somewhere. Okay. It's there we go. today. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Uh, today we're looking at your rain and fog photos, so visit sdp.io slash submit and send in your rain and fog photos during the course of the live oh, show. Oh no. What's the matter? I forgot to make a slide for next week. Oh, well what's next week's theme? Tell, tell us, you just say it verbally. It's either cityscapes or reflections. I was waiting to the last minute because there was kind of a tie on Patreon. So do you want to go to Patreon really quick and see which one is winning? Uh, okay. So we have a Patreon page, and anyone that donates to our Patreon page gets to choose our next live show theme. Uh, and it was pretty close. So I wanted to wait until the last minute, but apparently I waited too long, and then I forgot. How, how can I see this? You can, I guess I have to log in. Yeah, you got to log in. If you are voting on the poll, you can also put suggestions in the comments below, and if I like them, I put them in the next week's poll, and then you can vote on it. You take over. I don't know how to do this Patreon thing. Okay. Well, I'm just going to pick reflections. Okay. Tony can't log into Patreon. <laughs> no, we were logged in. I just didn't know where to click to see your poll. Okay. <clears throat> There's wow. like no news of note. Uh, I saw that B&H settled their racial discrimination lawsuit for three point something million dollars. Uh, and they've agreed to put employees through training and stuff. So I think that's Fairly big news. We've been waiting for a couple of years to see how that settled out. I <laughs> how does they, that uh, training go? They're like, you can't make Hispanic people use a different bathroom. And they're like, oh. Oh. <laughs> Is there going to be a test? <laughs> yeah, I hope they get their stuff straightened out. Uh, I'll import some pictures and see if we have anything good coming in. You do that. I hope the pictures are great this week. I already see some good thumbnails. We always talk about a fog plan, and that's finding a place that would look good on a foggy day and then waiting for that day and going there and getting your shots. Tony made it up. Maybe. Did you make that up, Tony? Yeah, I think I think I made it up. I mean, I think if you researched it, I bet you'd find somebody from 1817 who Is it wrote also a book on fog you planning. you in your previous form? Yeah, it was me. Oh. This is a nice fog shot. It has a nice mood. Uh, I will say most of the shot just is kind of white. You know, one nice thing about fog is is using it to work with depth. And sometimes I'll even see a scene when it's not foggy. And I'll think, oh, this might be nicer when it is foggy. And we'll take a look at a couple of scenes like that, I think. Um, shot from John Beccarelli. Cougar. Okay. Here the fog is definitely adding to the mood. There might be distractions in the background that would uh, otherwise make the shot too cluttered, but the fog is hiding everything kind of past the building, so it, it very much isolates them. In fact, you can kind of see some other buildings behind it that, that would be detracting from the picture. I think I like it in black and white because the colors of the lights are distracting to me. Yeah. 
but that's a personal choice, John. And this is the kind of scene that's definitely improved by fog. This is gorgeous. This is going to be my first pick. This looks like uh, uh, the Czech Republic, right? Or what do you think? <laughs> um, the birds are perfect. The silhouette of the building is perfect. Gorgeous shot. Exactly the kind of thing for a fog plan, right? That's some good fog planning. Nice work, Andre. Oh, Louis. I knew Louis. I knew yeah, Louis was This is beautiful. I love the color contrast, the blue, white, and red. Really stunning. Yeah, and if you're in San Francisco, it's good to have a fog plan. Remember, we <laughs> the first time we went to San Francisco, we must have tried like five or six times to take pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge, and all we got was just total fog. Yeah. It was an attractive fog like this. This is almost amazing how it just separates so cleanly. Yeah, and the fact that the top of it is poking through. He shot this at 200 millimeters, so it's like a fairly tight composition. It's unusual to shoot a landscape with that, but you can see it really isolated the, the subject. Olivier Costier. Oh, this is um, some subtle fog, but it really does add to the shots. Very beautiful. Yeah, it really does <gasps> add some mood. Wait. Is this real? Oh, you think he might have photoshopped it in because of that weird little... I think he may have used my little... Oh, you did make a tutorial. My on cloud Adam. brush. I see right here something looks off to me. But hey, I didn't notice and for... Maybe it's real. Maybe. Yeah, it didn't bump me and I'm usually pretty particular about that. Tim Tattersall. Oh, well then. Tim. Gorgeous, right? Yeah, you could, you could have very picked subtle fog, but... Pretty colors. Yeah, it has like a lot of, of depth green. to it. And the fact that the birds are going through it really makes a shot. Otherwise, there might not be a focal point, really. Speaking of birds, well. I don't know about this. It, it looks seems like, like it's super, they send a super low resolution shot. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay. It looks nice there. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really hang at 4K. Horse in the fog. <gasps> Ooh, sounds like a scary movie. Yeah, um, hmm. I don't know. Uh, I am playing with adding more blacks in, even though one of the things that fog will do is reduce the contrast. And you could hit the dehaze slider and pretty much completely eliminate that fog look. But yeah, like I, I guess there's just something that feels I a little like the softness it. to it. I sure think I would is. just get rid of the stick out of the horse's back. Yeah. And these good, yeah. this cluster of. Um, oh, you don't like that flaring? No. Andy Green. Andy Green. This is definitely a beautiful scene. Um, it's so flat, though. I would just brighten the whites. Yeah, maybe just give it a nice white point. All right. Wow. <clears throat> I think this is probably a great shot of this building. But whether or not the shot of the building can stand alone, if you don't have any context for the building, if the building itself isn't compelling for you, then, it, I mean, because there's nothing about it that strikes me as fascinating, but I think if you're taking a shot of that building, it turned out good. I like the fog yeah. part of the photo. Um, Justin Hernandez, another Justin? Winter Storm, Stella Manhattan Bridge. I really like the way the bridge just, just fades out here. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to give that one a pick. Certainly at the Manhattan Bridge, there would, without the fog, there would be an enormous amount of clutter and distractions in the background, yeah. like a whole city. I like that shot. Um, oh, rain. Okay. I was like, really had the fog thing going. So Yeah, this is our first rain shot. Um, I you wouldn't even know if it was, it was raining except for that umbrella. Mm-hmm. I like these two. You can tell they're having a real conversation going on. I wish I could see a little more of his expression, but it's pretty nice. Ooh, foggy friends. Let's raise the white point a little bit. I like that. It tells a story. Yeah, I think it's okay for fog shots to be low contrast, but I still think you should at least have something close to a white point. You don't want it to just look muddy, middle gray. That's kind of what you did. You just brightened it up. Wow. 
Kaisen Rider. What a cool name, too. Um, that is some beautiful fog just rolling over the edges of the cliff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Oh, All this right. is a beautiful nice portrait. Shot. I like the reflection in the banister. Yeah. Really creative. Uh, and, you know, you captured the rain here, which is really hard to do. You're at one four hundredth of a second, and that getting that shutter speed right is a big part of getting the rain to appear. If you were at uh, one two hundredth of a second or one one twenty fifth, then you know the rain would be much, the raindrops would be much smaller and less apparent, or they'd be so long rather that they might completely disappear into the background. I like that the reflection, but it down. feels the picture feels a little unbalanced to me. Like, I like her expression, but I also understand that it's about the reflection. So, you do you. Toby Fink. A lot of, um, like, well, it doesn't look that foggy. It just looks cloudy, but also the colors are kind of bizarre. Let's see, you have a lot of, they look a little muddy. Yeah, the colors did look unnatural to me. I agree. Um, but sunset shots, I like them. Fog, rain, and sunshine. I like the drops on the lens and the weird effects that they made. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like a shot of something. Like, it I'm feels like sure. the shot is of these things. Yeah. Definitely different. <gasps> wow. Yeah, I guess the smoke effects during a concert definitely. Yeah, a fog kind of, machine. This guy has an awesome hat. Um, I I don't know, this creeps me out a little bit, right? Like I'm that beetle out. is just sneaking up like a evil like Herbie. Like Christine. Remember that movie? I do. My family really liked that movie. Um I yeah, I could use a focal well, I, I'm just, I'm not sure what's going on. I like that it's almost like, impre you can tell you're looking through a window. Yeah, it's interesting. David, Lake Arcadia. A lot of fog today. Looks like a real foggy one. Yeah, I like the shot a lot. Um, I don't know, it just has a peaceful mood. There's not a particular focal point that pops out to me, but it's kind of ambient and nice. I feel alone. Sorry, I don't have more direct feedback for you. Let's go to our friend Siobhan and ask her if she has any fun or interesting questions. I'm giving her a really long lead in. I only have three, so yes. Um, we got a money comment already from Robbie's Kitchen. Robbie! Roddy. Roddy! Roddy, cook for us. <laughs> Last live show before the eclipse. See you all down in totality. Thanks for the tip on filming it. You're welcome. Yeah, glad to help. We plan too late, so we probably can't get a hotel down there, but we will sleep on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, travel is supposed to be a nightmare. Oh, Like getting to anywhere along the totality is supposed to be next to impossible. They expect roads to be backed up for days. It's going to be really hard to get in and out of there. Not to be a bummer. Look forward to it. <laughs> anyway, as a result, we've kind of decided we're going to enjoy the amount of eclipse that we get in this region. It's not the same. Rather than traveling to it. What else, Shabong? Troy wants to know if you have ever bounced a flash off of a mirror as the main light. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you would want to. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Unless you were using multiple mirrors for some elaborate lighting angle. Yeah, like you buy a, another mirror instead of a light, just keep bouncing it. No, I haven't done that. What else, Siobhan? <laughs> One more question from Twitter. Did you study photography and what would you recommend for others that can't? I'm constantly studying photography. Yeah, I, maybe they mean, did they go to, like, a university? I took for... formal classes. Yeah. Film. And I and think that's a tough choice. I, I'm not sure if that's the question, but a lot of people do ask, should you go to a photography school? I think photography school is definitely worth it, depending on 
what type of photography you're going into? Well, I was going to say it depends on the personality type because some people learn best in a classroom environment. Other people do much better learning on their own. Yes, I'm a person who learns better on their own. But if you want to be a gallery artist, you should go to a college and start making connections and networking because that's pretty much the only way. Yeah, I totally agree. If you're going to be a fine art photographer, it is. Tony and I about have kind of a debate. I'm more for photography school. I think you're a little less. Oh, I definitely don't think it's right for everybody, but yeah, I think it's right for some people. Some people learn that way, and you're right. Fine art photographers in general, they consistently, the ones we know, they consistently report that the relationships they built during school were important to them. I think if you're going to be a wedding photographer, and you're good at learning on your own. You don't need to go to spend the money on a school. You're probably better off putting that time. Into no, but I do think it would still be helpful to take a few photography classes um, and art history classes, even if you're just going to be a family, do family portraiture or something where it's not about fine art. Okay. You want to do chit chat? Let's do chit chat. We didn't okay. do it last week. We had Giselle Dupre on the show, a very talented street photographer, and we totally skipped over chit chat. So we'll make up for it this week. Our first comment, mind crusher. I don't need a NAS. I just buy new SD cards and never put the files on my PC. Makes life so easy. How many SD cards would we have if we did that? Can, can you... This just it reminds me of back in the film days. Remember when you used to have like rolls of film or mm -hmm. your developed negatives like stashed away somewhere. Yeah. This person, if this is real, they just have all their pictures on lots of little SD cards. And if they want to reference them, they have to dig out the SD card and I guess put it in their computer. It I don't works. know. I put this in here because it just blew my mind that somebody lives this way. This is what all their pictures are just offline. I relate to this person because this is something that a tech illiterate person would do. And that's what I would do. I'd just be like, I just have so many cards now. Good plan. Oh, let's look at her birthday pictures. We have to dig out the birthday SD card. Okay. This person said, wow, I'm in shock. No words. I don't even know why, why? you put that in there. It was just, I made a little video showing you how to free up some disk space on your computer. And now you're Why triggered? are they in shock? Now you're triggered. I don't know. I did say I wasn't a Mac person. Do you think that could be it? People get really upset. Well, not a Mac person. He has no words, so we can't even ask him. Cage says Tony is amazed by the 7.5 frames per second of the 7D. I'm watching this on 2017, and we have the Canon 1DX MK2, which does 14 frames per second and starts to buffer after about 170 frames raw. Laughy face. Well, this is from our old wildlife photography video. And do you remember how things used to be? Like we moved from the 5d mark ii which i don't know what that did like four frames a second or something and a mediocre focusing system up to the 7d which just seemed like super super fast yeah but now we're shooting with the a9 which is 20 frames a second sometimes i think that cameras in general and technology has just stalled like we're not seeing that much progress but really over the course of like five years we actually have yeah it's really just, we see a lot of changed small... the game yeah. yeah it's been pretty remarkable Vessel. I can't decide if he is a young guy that dyed his hair gray or an older guy that looks really young. Hmm. There's another option. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Dun, 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 People dun. prematurely gray. It's a thing that happens. Respect the wizard, you plebes. <laughs> Sometimes someone just makes me laugh. And yeah, I, have to I don't know what they're comment. talking about, but I, I don't appreciate know what they're it. talking about, but it's funny. Michael says, your new lighting is just gorgeous. Okay. You're just gorgeous, Michael. A <laughs> wink. Okay. Podcast. I yeah, guess we, we have... go back to looking at some pictures. Uh, or maybe we should take that as Squarespace portfolio. Oh. Let's look at some pictures. Oh. We'll Ooh, back you're really portfolio. taking me. <laughs> I know. It's a roller coaster today. Mm -hmm. Bill Rigsby. Um, the, the fog definitely makes this picture more interesting, dun, dun, right? Dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah, and again, you're going back to kind of brightening it up. Yeah, true. It's got some good color in there. I am. That's a nice squiggly tree. He found. I mean, it's a picture of that neighborhood. Whoa, banding. Ba ba banding. Yeah, this is like an example of the negative side effect of JPEG compression. So maybe they saved it in a really compressed format, but, but obviously I, the banding there becomes pretty I like pretty the obvious. contrast, and I, I like the picture. 
Yeah, I'm going to give it a pick. I really like the isolation of the subject there, and to me, it conveys that kind of fly fishing mood. Uh, check out the histogram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has like 16. It's like a, a eight bit image. <laughs> Ooh, Foggy Bear, Bear Town, Town Forest. Forest. Gotta go there. I I wish it had some sort of focal point, and in fact, the fog could be dialed up a notch. If Whoa, that's a thing. he's judging your fog game. Yeah, I'm just saying my eye just doesn't really rest anywhere. I, I think it's beautiful. I like the richness. Paul Fog oh, really Shrouded cool. Parking Lot. It is just a parking lot, but I don't know. The... Dice and put up a parking lot. <laughs> Did you guys like that song? I felt like it was really woke. Like I was like, don't it always seem to go? Wow, you guys hate the earth. Forget you. <laughs> nice shot, Paul. I'm sorry that I sang your entire picture. Clearly it moved me to song. And I like the mood. Okay. Magnus. A cool ass name. This is a beautiful scene. Uh, I'm trying to think of what to do with it. There's, just, I almost just overlooked soak this, it in with this your farmlands at the bottom because there's so much darker than the rest of the scene. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe I was a graduated gonna do filter this graduated could filter. Boost that a little. Let's boost this B. Don't it always seem to go? I know everyone's going to try to give me a record deal now, but I'm just like. I don't have time for that. Okay. Lower the black point too. Just get those trees nice and dark. No, I'm gonna dehaze. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do your thing too. Okay. Thanks. I'm a generous person. Okay. I I love the different layers here. We have the yeah. sky. We have the middle ground, and then we have the foreground. It almost not, looks fake. It's yeah. so cool. What you don't. You get a pick. Well, I'm not sure that brightening the foreground there is the right thing but i think it depends on how it's being presented you know if you made a print uh, that contrast is something you'd really want to manage uh, including considering like how the print itself was going to be lit sure um but on our screen it seemed to disappear so bev this is foggy yeah and spooky i guess what's bothering me about it is the like we need like a um unattended child in a sailboat to really <laughs> A little rowboat. There you go. Okay. The the branches in the foreground feel not deliberate to me. It didn't necessarily feel like it was a careful. Like, I do think it's a picture. cool photo. Uh, tough mutter. Oh. Oh dang. Let's put it in B and W. Interesting. I will say I now that we know it's tough mutter that doesn't convey. You know somebody. We need a tough tearing it up, or maybe a person is more of the focal <gasps> point might make it more compelling. Norn, Norm State Stevens. State Fair Bridge. It's, oh, it's I've seen better bridges for sure. Okay. I hope this will be repaired in the new infrastructure. Oh yeah, plan. yeah. It's in the budget. We're gonna get to this bridge last. <laughs> okay. Well, I like it. It's unusual. It caught my attention. Good job. Um, this is there majestic. is fog here, but I don't see a focal point. You know, the only thing my eye rests on are the kind of the cars in the parking lot over in the right corner. I I like the way that he used the reeds to frame the picture, but I agree there should be some a little payoff in the middle. Oh, I love this when this happens. Cool, Nick. Yeah, seeing the rain from a distance. Uh, from a distance. <laughs> But again, I would love to have great a great colors. Here. Yeah, beautiful colors. Jim B. Early morning mist. Trafford Park. I don't know what it's this a picture of. This is crazy. Of. This is why we need Joni Mitchell songs. See all that? I like the colors. Makes me scared. I like this a lot. A single subject, isolated. It conveys the weather. I'm giving an epic. My nice shot, David. Reminds me of Game of Thrones. All right. 
I like this too. And I, I actually think when it's raining is the best time to do night photography in a city because you get all those cool reflections going on. And that does show some of it. You might even try getting a little closer to the ground and more kind of filling the frame. The most prominent thing here is definitely the, the town car. Yeah. But I think the most prominent thing should be I think it's this, this person flare. in the foreground. It's cool. Yeah, the flare is interesting prominent. shot. Mick for three. Oh, interesting. I'm not seeing fog or rain. Let's get a white point. Ah, ah. Okay, what's happening here? Why is it so noisy like that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Ooh, I like the separation you got here between these trees in the background and this tree in the foreground. You get a lot of depth. Yeah. Once again, scp.io slash top tip. I like this photo. I'm going to give it a pick. Nice. Oh, we got to level that horizon. That's right. pretty. Oh, Don't I'll leave think. that to you. Mm. It's hard because there's not. There's not really. A real hard mm. horizon line here. Siobhan, do you have any questions or comments lined up for us that you could read and we could hear and then we could answer them? Yes, I do. Thanks for that lead in. <laughs> we have a couple more money comments. Dang, people are generous. Yep. Gabriel gave us five pounds and said, I watched you about 10 hours this week since discovering Tony shaved his beard some time ago. Well earned <laughs> tip. <laughs> Tony did Maybe. shave his beard. I did. Yeah, I wonder if he like went on a strike of your videos because he thought you still had a goatee. And he was like, no more goatee. I appreciate that. It is weird wow. because people can jump forward and back through our lifespan. So they might watch one of our original videos from five years ago and then watch a new yeah. video and be like, oh, what the hell? How'd you get so much older all of a sudden? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> okay, what else, Siobhan? Oh, I'm, I'm that sorry. Was that fun. was fun. Unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I think that was my first phone going off during the live show. <laughs> um, our dear friend Roderick gave us 20 euros and said, Dang. Thanks, Justin. Have a beer and some pretzeled bread on me. What is pretzeled bread? <laughs> pretzeled bread? Thanks, what they Roderick. call pretzels in Ireland? Yeah, I, I, that sounds good, whatever it is. Yeah, we need to is. figure out what that is, Justin, then we need to have some, okay? Pretzel bread sounds like a dream. That's what. Yeah. Um, do you think Nikon Canon will make a hybrid DSLR or go straight to mirrorless next year? I think they're going to go straight to mirrorless. Yeah, I do too. I want them to make a hybrid, but I just don't think they won't. I think they can be kind of stubborn. I don't think they're going to stick an EVF in a DSLR, but they should. Mm, we'll see. Just my opinion. Just his opinion. You want to take a look at a, sure. this is not a photography site. This is a cartography site because you can host Whoa, any type of site. Oh, any kind of ography your heart can imagine. Uh, well, last week we had um, someone that created a cat coloring book. They showed us their Squarespace. It was beautiful. And then they sent us that cat. Oh coloring. yeah. Thank you for saying And that. I would hold it up right now if I didn't have it in the office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should show off. Travis Dewitt's Blaze Orange. Yeah, let's do that after our Squarespace thing. Oh, okay. We'll stay focused here on Matt J. Sosa's cartography site. Uh, well, it looks really good. It's a very clean layout. Um, it's easy to navigate. Yeah. We definitely. are not cartography experts, but this looks approachable the way that you've laid it out. Very I wouldn't clean. be surprised if Justin was a cartography expert. Are you a cartography expert, Justin? No, but... I know that stuff takes a long time, like weeks to do like a single like land map kind of thing. But look at yeah. this beautiful like baby does it. And stuff. Yeah, it's impressive. <laughs> nice one, Matt. He's a senior at UCLA. And there's his contact information. Dang. Uh, awesome. Cool. I think that's a great way to show off your work. It looks good. Here's what Matt had to say about life using Squarespace. I made this in 20 minutes, waited for your podcast to start. So Chelsea had a non-photography Squarespace portfolio to critique. You're so smart. Super fast, super easy. Thanks for sending it in, Matt. If you want your own Squarespace 
portfolio, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Get a 14-day free trial. Use the coupon code portfolio. If you decide to sign up, no credit card required until you actually decide to buy. Uh, thanks for sponsoring a Squarespace. Let's look at a photography portfolio while we're at it, too. Tell me which of these catches your eye. Can't believe you just made that in 20 minutes. It's good. Yeah, it did turn out good. What, what about this? These look delicious, oh right? Oh, my gosh. I bet that's a press, pretzel bread. <laughs> oh, I was skip. thinking they had some fancy British word. Like, are they like crumpets or uh, um, nuggets or something? What would you call it? It's this? a little diddly dupe. <laughs> okay. This first picture really draws me in. Okay. This is TJ Youngman. <gasps> oh my gosh. I like this kind of magazine spread. You did something different, and it's really, we haven't seen anyone do anything like this. It's beautiful. It's more like a magazine or a blog or. Yeah. The... Uh, Squarespace gives you these templates that make it really easy to lay things out like this. And, and, she did a and great this job makes sense with your photography too, because you styled the shoot for this cupcake company and it looks so professional. I can already imagine it in a magazine. I would want to hire you right away. You make food look beautiful and I could see what it would look like when it made it to, to a newspaper or a magazine. Well, dang. And it's, Definitely a good layout. I like nowadays oh the gosh. modern style is this kind of you just scroll to see everything. Okay, you I'm, I'm seeing an, like your style evolve here. So you have this is more modern and environmental. I do not think that this picture matches your new style. Yeah, and the same with the cupcake picture right below it especially because yeah. you have so many good cupcake pictures. I think those two can just, just go. Just get rid of them. This is more your style for a drink. Like, the, you've made it to a new level. But I personally but, don't like jalapenos in my margaritas. I know some people do. Mm, okay. Well, you can't be perfect. Maybe that's off topic. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot Look of awesome pictures. Look at this fiddlehead could definitely... living its life. This is, I just want to keep scrolling and I'm hungry. Okay, let's yeah, see what else. Yeah, those pictures are really this beautiful and a great amount of diversity great, in there, too. Really great. Very well organized. Oh, you do portraits, too? I wish you'd take pictures of me with a cupcake. Okay. <laughs> Kids. This is definitely a category that you should continue building out. Yeah. Like, just keep shooting portraits, and uh, at, once you you're able to add more pictures and you'll be able to thin some of those out, reduce the redundancy in it. What was this category I missed? It. Macro. And I love Macro. your Kiwi shot. That's really cool. These two don't look good in the thumbnail, but maybe they're better big. Um, a lot of caterpillars, so just pick your best one. Yeah, so your main category, oh, surfaces? Okay. Uh, then, I'm... Oh my gosh, what? You're so cool. I guess I'm wondering now what the goal of it is. It certainly seems like a site where Tanya's selling her services, um, but something like the macro category isn't something she'd probably sell. Well, I'm seeing what you're, oh, we know what these are called now. Almond pinwheel pastries with lemon curd. Get out of uh, here. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, your food stuff is really drawing me in and it seems so much better organized than anything else. Um, if you're looking to just shoot food, I'd get rid of the other categories and just focus on that. You're so incredibly talented with that. Oh, she's doing bridal stuff and everything too. So this place looks familiar. So you do have a lot of categories. I think I, at this point I would take out the macro photography category or anything non-professional. The site should be a professional site or it should be a hobbyist site, but I, I don't like it. I don't feel comfortable with it when somebody's trying to sell services and then you see like just their casual photography in there. So I guess I would pull everything that doesn't represent services that you specifically are trying to sell. What were the other categories? Um, oh, macro like, portrait events. Yeah, so get rid of the macro work. Um, I mean, this is not events. It's just you shot, it looks like you shot some dirt bikes and that one thing. And what was this category? Personal. Yeah, I would get rid of personal too. I mean, well, you might no, want to say that. I'm up just a stalking her because I thought maybe she was local. But yeah. 
maybe maybe separate sites yeah and i think what you could do is she does it all promote some of promote these categories to top level categories so you don't have that drop list and then have food portrait real estate let's just set this portfolio list. aside because i saw some pretty good looking recipes okay <laughs> okay we'll keep that tanya thanks for sending in your portfolio Tanya had to say, I really love my Squarespace website. I they have great templates that are easy to customize with attention to user experience and the analytics analytics are very useful. I recommend that any I recommend them to anyone looking for website. I options. loved the the magazine feel to her layout. She she did something very creative and beautiful. Yeah, they well, Squarespace just introduced a bunch of new templates. Yeah. And I'm in the process of well, I started changing mine and then I didn't finish it. You can set up like a staging site a beta site yeah. so you can play with it and get it all ready before you actually switch it over and that's where i am i just it only doesn't take long i just got interrupted in the middle of it I had i'm switching it. to a site that has this 3d scrolling have you ever seen that no it's where the foreground and background scroll at different paces and it's oh, just yeah. it's really beautiful as if there's a lot of depth to your image mm. but they just introduced these new 3d templates and so i want to use those but they're always introducing new templates so you can keep your website looking modern i want to update hours. mine because I have to add new pictures to mine, too, and it's always fun. I, for me, it's fun to take out your old picture. It was once your best of that type of picture, and then you improved, and you can say goodbye. It's fun. Well, thanks to, for sponsoring a Squarespace. If you want your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Get yourself a 14-day free <laughs> trial. Get the site all set up. If you decide you like it, you can use the coupon code PORTFOLIO to sign up. You don't have to That's put a credit card in. squarespace.com slash Tony. <laughs> let's look at some more pictures we looked at yeah we looked at jp's picture uh dave Lunat, lewandowski um dave lewandowski fairy okay. at the end of the double rainbow the fairy doesn't convey no but the double the rainbow. rainbow is blowing me away i'm gonna give this a pink <laughs> dang London. uh that is really cool i don't know is this something that they added in post? Oh, it is, isn't it? Is it? I believe so. Interesting. Okay, it's cool. London's known for rain. I like the mood. A foggy day in my backyard. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a nice atmospheric shot. I wish, you know, the moon were in it or something. The focal point. Mm. Rolling. I like the cart in the foreground. The cow. Add some contrast. Oh, I like the cow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So Euro style. I like that shot. Cell phone booth on the Appalachian Trail. Neat. I don't see like, oh, is the rain out? Oh, it's foggy. Okay. Yeah. I'm, it doesn't tell much of a story to me. It Not took me a while to figure it out. Booths, yeah. It, yeah, I don't know what's going on. So you might just think about how to convey that story with the composition. Man, this is very creepy. I like it. Yeah, this needs a person going I through was it thinking or something, like a, right? Like, it's a very spooky person. Yeah, I think it's a good spot to camp out Ooh, and just wait for somebody to come through. Beautiful. Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. Matt. Excellent. I'm going to give that one a pick. The clouds add depth. Really nice. It separates one hill from another. I like this little detail shot, Tom. Good contrast. Sebastian. I like this photo. I like... I just think it needs a white point. A little contrast. Yeah, I'll fog shots are always like going to be a little contrast, and the camera's always going to expose it by default to just be middle gray. Our friend Aperture Blade, it was foggy. I see some fogginess to the photo. <laughs> if it doesn't convey, it doesn't convey, it's not right? not like the foggiest. Whoa. This is foggy. Whoa. <laughs> it's a mystery. Oh. Oh. But you get an anti pick for making puns. a pun. Get it, Tony? It's a mystery. Remember when you gave me such a bad pun last night? It almost ended our marriage. What was the pun? I don't know. It was awful. I think I, I think I wiped that memory. Clearly, it was a great pun. I I will give you a pick. I like it. 
I, I just like the simplicity and the isolation of it. Uh. Ooh, sun piercing. This is conflicting because there's some inconsistency. In... So natural and beautiful and then like crime scene. Yeah, it's that yellow <laughs> tape. I think maybe with a telephoto lens, you could have you know zoomed in on some smaller part of it and captured the part of the image that's really beautiful. Maybe they're, this is like, they're saying something about life. You gotta take the good with the bad. <laughs> maybe so. Do you gotta take the beautiful sunbeams with the crime scene tape? That is a rainy day. I knew people in Europe would be psyched about this one. They're it, like, rain, we got that. It is rainy, but it's just like the top of a building. It's the top of a roof, but yeah. the rain is nice. Whoa. Yeah. I, I'm going to give you a pick. I'm projecting here, but I always feel like with God rays that I they don't convey well in pictures, so I end up trying to magnify it by increasing the contrast or doing other processing things and maybe it went a little overboard maybe oh black and white works so much better i like it in black and white and that actually let me notice the bicycle and the person the form in black and white i'm gonna give it a pick pick we did that gert. together gert cool makes me want to put an interesting quote over it do you think gert says their name gert Gert. <laughs> I don't, I, sorry, Gert. I butchered your name with my New England accent. Um, what are these birds? This is stork? Yeah, I think it's some sort of stork. I like it. You have the birds coming in in the upper right corner. Justin, are these those special storks that they had to bring back? Justin, no Special things. Special storks. Um, mm. I'm not sure I remember Justin. what you're saying. Are you talking <laughs> yeah. about the, the condors? Is that what you're No, the yeah, storks. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Justin, I thought you knew everything. <laughs> There's brown pelicans. Is that what you meant? They had to no. bring those guys back. Oh, yeah, sorry. They made puppets that looked like the storks to feed the babies oh, and to right. teach them how And the hang glider thing. Is it like follow them around? Yeah. Frank Tegmeyer, you can look up your special store. Tony's no. tired of us. <laughs> uh, I like this shot a lot. It's very simple. I feel like the focus was missed a little bit, but regardless, I'm giving you a pick because you put some effort into it and the rain ended up looking really good. Um, I think what's happening is there's a flash firing back here. There's definitely some sort of bright light source that's illuminating all these things. It must be a flash, actually, if you're at ISO 100. Um, so it might even be a sprinkler or something, but you put some effort into it. I yeah, think it you told out people to do that. Really cool. That looks great. Uh, this shot is gorgeous, but I just wish we had something different in the in the foreground. Maybe it was taken from a car or something. It's definitely a beautiful scene. This poor guy who's got to work out there. I'm going to try to go quickly through pictures because we're already running oh, out of time. Oh, running out of time. The New Yorker. Uh, beautiful, beautiful long exposure of the New York City skyline. Oh, I see some fog. Fifteen seconds. Beautiful. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, God's big feet. Keep a shot like that, the horse needs to be in profile, I think. Yeah, or think closer. Think about the shape of something. So that they're, you know, not obstructed by the fog, but the fog is fading the background away. Yeah, but I can see the horse is moving, so just hang out for a little bit. Take a Eagle of hunting shots. This the shot's rain. amazing. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, you get a pick. You got the water frozen there. Oh, Tony, look, your favorite little lonely oak. <laughs> It is a lonely oak. I like that shot. Oh, that's a great shot. These people. Yeah. Pick. A canoe race. <gasps> what is happening? It's scary. I like it. Good rain photo. Give it a pick. A little blurry, but I like your idea. Oh, oh, that's really pretty. I would brighten pretty. up some, but I like the basic mood of it. Um, the There's no distractions. It's clear what they're conveying. I'm going to add contrast and up the whites a little bit. And you can see, just brought out the water droplets. Oh, pretty. Simple, but pretty. Yeah, another great shot with no distractions. I wish that I could see more of the horse, but yeah. I like the mood of the photo. Just hang out for a little bit. Let the horse move some. The birds were crucial in this one, Nikolai. 
Yeah, I'll give Nikolai a pick. I like beautiful. this abstract raindrop one. Pretty. Ooh, that scared me. I thought it was a big snake. Yeah, the yeah the foreground thing unfortunately doesn't feel deliberate. It almost feels like a distraction. Like the shot might be better if you just moved forward past it. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, uh, got some cool. Pretty. I like that. Uh, I don't think it's. I guess kind of foggy, misty. Adrian Richmond. After the rain, you get some interesting reflections. This That's is beautiful, beautiful fog. colors. I'm going to give that. Pick. I like the fence in the foreground. Mm, I'd like to see some payoff on that trail with the leading lines, but I do like the mood. Yeah, it's really same nice. Here. Maybe a little underexposed. Here we have a focal point. We have that sailboat, and that yeah. definitely helps. Otherwise, your eye might just go right. And I like that. how it's right. It's kind of right between um, the hills where they meet. So they act as leading lines and kind of frame the sailboat. It's really nice. Siobhan, do you have any other questions? I sure do. You do. I do. Um, Tobias Yoder said that the birds in the photo were sandhill cranes, but the one that Chelsea is trying to remember is the whooping crane. The whooping crane. That is what I was remembering. Justin, <laughs> come on. Am I going to have to get this guy yeah. on speed dial? You know what I mean? I, you might have to. <laughs> Well, I'm just teasing Justin because Tony and I always assume he knows everything, which I imagine is terrible. It's a lot of pressure. For it's a lot Justin. of pressure. Awesome shot, Rick. I just get What else, pick. Siobhan? Do you have anything? Any other questions? Who would win in an arm wrestle out of you four, and can we see evidence? Oh, it would definitely be Siobhan, right? <laughs> I thought it would be me. You may be in a fair arm wrestle, but Siobhan's other arm is is like just going for your face. You think that she would I've punch arm wrestled me? her before. It's rough. You think that she would just punch us before we could really arm wrestle? Yeah, that's her secret trick. I like that you just assume that no holds barred arm wrestling is the default. Yeah, yeah. I assume you just go for it. Go Siobhan for just whips out a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> she plays for keeps. We don't trust her. <laughs> Anything else, Siobhan? Oh, that made me cry laugh. <laughs> Someone with a name I can't read commented that Tony is my favorite computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw PCs and Macs. I only get the Tony two. I only have a Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm asking this because I also got an email about it recently. Someone asked if you have any experience using vintage lenses on modern bodies and what do you think of their relevance today? Oh, well, I think it can, you can get great results. I mean, we've, we've used vintage glass on vintage cameras, so that's not really our expertise, but Andy Shields, a good friend of ours, he wrote on our blog and he wrote just about using vintage glass and it's really good. So you should look it up at Northrop dot photo and we can probably put the link to it in the description down below too so you can check that out i have done some of it with mirrorless cameras and it actually works out pretty well because you can magnify the focus so you can really nail the focus or you can use focus yeah. peaking and you know you can even if you want that vintage look and you're going to be shoot, shooting in black and white you can get it black and white in the viewfinder um i will say I've tested lots of vintage lenses and people say that there's all these like super sharp vintage lenses that are sharper than modern lenses. I think in my experience, cheap modern lenses are sharper than vintage lenses, but yeah, vintage but at that lenses point, have this You're going extra for quality. a different look. You're going, yeah. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to contest that one thing, but vintage lenses do give you a look and sharpness is not all that matters. Um, and the process and enjoyment of the process is part of it. And I love using, especially like those old lenses with the clicking aperture rings mm -hmm. and the big heavy things. They just have this like feel to them and a character to them. So yeah, it can definitely work. Don't do it for technical reasons. Do it for style. Andy Shields and has a good blog. He has much more experience than us. So you should check that out. This picture is amazing. I'm going to give that a pick and five right yeah. away. Yeah, I've been flipping through pictures, but I definitely want to stop on that one. This one's great too. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I love this crow. Thing. Pick. I don't see rain or fog, but I love the crows. <laughs> Justin, have you heard of the whooping crane? John Cheshire. 
I, I've heard of them. They I feed them with a puppet. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Do you know what I'm talking about now? Yeah, yeah. They had to fly them with one of those gliders. Yeah, it was like an ultralight. Because their moms. It was pretty cool. They have bad moms. Yeah, there's a documentary <laughs> about it, I think. Yeah, it's why I they're think. all dying. There's a good podcast about it. This lady is sad, John. I'm going to give it a pick because she's so sad. She yeah, I like this shot a lot. I was just pondering if maybe a faster shutter yeah, speed would have Don't drive and do that. Rain. Oh, that's, that's really cool. Beautiful. I like that shot. I'm going to pick. <gasps> Nature's beautiful. Pick. Okay. That's <laughs> a that duck. duck. <laughs> that's a duck. He's infinite. Oh. Oh, man. This is awesome. I'm going to give it so a pick, cute. even though I feel a little bit of terror that one of those bikes is going to... Those big wheels. Right over it. I, I, I'm almost wondering if we could get away with more of a crop. I, I still want to convey the wheels and everything, but I almost like I that I, he looks so small. Like it makes me nervous for him. Yeah, I like the we, original crop. What if we do this? I like it before, but I appreciate you trying to improve it. Okay. Oh, castle. Towards the end, we never get very good feedback. <laughs> Tyler B, rain is coming. I like the shot, and I, I don't know, just the tops of the buildings here mm -hmm. are so interesting. I'm going to give this one a pick, too. It was just a good eye. Ooh, this one's pretty. Give it a pick. It's so dark and a little off-level, but they're going for the god rays here, which, again, they're they're hard to capture. They are. I think if you're interested in that location, then that last picture would be interesting. Alejandro. This picture is fantastic. You definitely get a pick. Uh, Got to be one of the best shots of this particular, of Santiago. I'm going to give this a pick. Which I need to visit. That place is gorgeous. Oh, you should tell me how it is. <laughs> you want me to go alone? <laughs> <laughs> no. I just like the idea of imagining like you were just going to visit. Um. Mm. Unusual angle and lines. Let's put it in B and W so we can focus on that. Beautiful marsh. Yeah, very pretty. I mean, with the last couple of shots, we were looking nice. for, I think, a focal point would help it out. Here we want to see the bird in profile bird. or the head tilted towards you. talking about me. All right. <laughs> okay, that's adorable. You get a pick. Taste of freedom. It's a nice screenshot. I love the rain in that shot. Oh my, oh gosh, my god, that's yeah, this is fantastic. Oh, oh, I love bird shots in the rain. I'll give that one a pick too. These are great. Can I just back up and give a tip on this pigeon picture? I bet you took a bunch of shots. Hopefully, you did. If you were to stack them, you could then bring in the raindrops from other shots and it would help to convey the rain because. It was probably raining very heavily, but you only see a couple of raindrops. So you could bring in rain from other frames and it would better convey the amount of rain that was actually happening. That was a really cute shot. That person. <laughs> you you had to kind of explore it to see that dude. I like the payoff. I like it, yeah. Oh, that's great. Cool. Good use of the focal point. Your eye goes where he is looking. This shot is amazing, gorgeous Andrew. Bison. Fantastic shot. Gorgeous bison. Oh. Ain't no sunshine. The vastness. Lonely. That's really pretty. That... But this isn't rain or fog. Oh, this is a right. beautiful, beautiful place. Nice. Ooh, cloudy. That's a gorgeous landscape. Cloudy. Feels but... very Ansel Adams-ish. Not rainy or... Yeah, I guess that's just clouds. Some fog in there. Maybe HD or too much. Oh, That's gorgeous. Yeah. You did it. Um, here the Pick. shutter speed might be a little too fast. A slower shutter speed would convey... I like it. ...would elongate it a little bit. I like it. This is beautiful. Oh, oh my gosh. The person in the shot. See it's what I mean? It's Ireland. So, Smack Jack. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, fantastic shot, Erlen. And, oh, he got himself a 5DSR. Dang, upgraded. Dang, Erlen, all that swimming with cameras really paid off for you. Scale. 
this is what this conveys and yeah. it's a focal point and those are just so important and that's something we've commented over and over again was missing from different shots so he nailed it great job that terrifies me but i still like the picture okay Ooh, love it yeah very cool gelled lights okay any other questions before we go siobhan sure Oh my gosh, she's got there. another money comment. Dang, you could be All rich. Right. Ten dollars. Thanks for all the awesome Ciao, content, everyone. I'll be getting SDP soon. You guys have helped me out a ton so far. Keep up the great work. Thank you for your support. Well, thank you. For ten bucks, you should have bought SDP. Yeah. For the win. Anything else, Shablon? Yes. Good pick. I like the shot. What was your biggest inspiration to start shooting? Mm. For me, it was moving to New England, coming from Central Texas, where everything was flat and dry. Uh, I came to New England, everything was gorgeous and lush and quaint, and I felt like I just wanted to capture it. I just wanted to capture it. I like making stuff. Just making I stuff. I made a baby, and then I liked documenting that baby. <laughs> but mostly, I just like making stuff. Look at this goat. Anything else, Siobhan? Yes. Oh, All right. Nige keeps harassing me about it, so I'll ask his question. Who? T N not Nige. 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 T N C. My beverage this evening is the Somerset cider. Is this okay, or should your viewers drink something more refined? <laughs> Cider's fine. I drink wine from a box like a monster, <laughs> so I'm not gonna judge you. Yeah, I don't know what would be. Have we? Oh, no, we don't judge. No, I don't remember ever being like Somerset Cider. What a piece of trash. I, that sounds very <laughs> fancy. I that think we should nice. try it next week, everybody. Is but we'll all, approve of it. Is that all, Siobhan? I mean, no, I can give you more if you want. All right, let's take one more. Whoa, that was good. Oh, gorgeous shot, Patrick. Um, well, That's I'm going to give you a man. nice comment Thank. from James Beard, my friend. I just had a flashback to the days when the live stream used to be really jumpy, but it's been super smooth now for ages. So well done, Justin and the team. Thank you. Yeah, we finally got it dialed in. It's hard. I, I pity anybody else who tries to set up a live show. It's real hard. But now that we got it dialed in, we're uh, changing everything. So brace yourself. Gosh. <laughs> well, we're building a second live studio. Yeah. So... It's hard. I mostly leave it up to Tony. <laughs> I leave it up to Justin. No, I definitely leave it up to Tony. <laughs> that, that's, that's probably why we haven't set it up oh yet, because there's this circle of leaving it up to that's not. Look at this duck. This is so cute. <laughs> Matt, this picture is adorable. I got to give that a pick and five stars. Could use pick. more rain in it, though. Go back and think about adding in more rain. No, I can't. Post. It's perfect. Well, the yeah, bird is perfect. I'm saying, oh, you know, you could, there is actually a lot more rain they can't so see. Cute. Maybe a little dodging and burning could bring that out some. They are so fluffy. I'm just flipping through real quickly. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, time, your but... pictures are amazing this week, guys. This is so cute. <laughs> Look at those little Make buns on the beach. Your pictures are great. Dang. I wish wow. there were a little more space above them. Again, might be something they you can could fix easily, and post if you have other you, shots. Yeah, but look, his front wheel's off the ground. Yeah, we that should do a video good. on how to make more space in your photos. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I should do it. Moto photo. Saw your face. Yay, okay, we looked we at everybody's it. picture. Nobody right. can complain. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, if you'd like to support us, but also try out your very own website, you can go to squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon code portfolio for 10% off. You can also just try a free trial today. Uh, no credit card needed. It's a good exercise. It's cool. You can submit that free trial to sdp.io slash link and we'll talk about it. We'll Thanks for sponsoring us, Square, Squarespace. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Siobhan. And we will see you guys next week, Thursdays at 5, where the theme reflections. next week is Reflections. Reflections. Let's go. Bye. Pizza. Oh, that is all. Gotta go. Felt tired. That's good.
feel tired. <laughs>